it's the start of my personal favorite volume. Hooray! The first episode of Volume 3 kicks things off right away with a bang, diving right into the middle of the tournament arc, and I adore tournament arcs. This volume clearly has a bit of a shift with its visuals, likely due to a combination of Monty's unfortunate passing and also more and more animators taking on larger roles in his stead. It's not a downgrade by any means, but it is noticeably different at times. Combat specifically feels more stretchy, which I know is a bit polarizing to some, but I think it's fine. There are other things with the combat that people tend to not enjoy. Overall, there's more pauses and cuts away from certain action moments, making things feel a tad slower than the show had felt before. I understand if you're not a fan of this change, but I'm not too bothered by it. So long as something cool happens, I'm more often than not forgiving of slow or weirdly timed pauses. It's when things slow down, and we don't even get cool moments like in Volume 5's finale, where I really start to take umbrage with these sort of things. My biggest issue is how Port and Ublek interrupt the action to explain the tournament structure. I feel like we could have had their explanation while still seeing some action. Like, do a split screen effect. <laughs> but whatever. Every good tournament arc needs to introduce cool characters along the way, and Team Auburn here are all pretty fantastic. They don't really have much personality to speak of, and their weapons lean more towards simplistic than most, and we don't even see anyone's semblances either, but hot dang, I do love their designs. <laughs> Anyways, here not only are the animations with the actions a bit different, but the animations with their facial expressions have gotten better and better and better. There's tons of fun personalities on display with the way everyone is animated, and it also makes them all a lot funnier. Not only is the food stall scene funny, but the way we get to see all eight of our friends getting to just hang out is a treat. It's very rare we get to see them just being together in a normal setting, and after this volume, these occasions become more and more rare, so I love getting to see it done so well here. The best part of the episode, I would say, is the spectacle of their fight. Similar to Volume 2's food fight, this scene helped to re-establish the kids' skill set for the viewer. Blake's sneak attack on the hoverboard girl, Weiss's giant ice hand, Yang's bananas berserker punch to finish off the Fight. So cool and all so iconic. The worst part of the episode? This is gonna sound so mean. It's Ruby. Just like everything about Ruby. Lindsay's voice is reaching its highest pitch yet with their performance here, and it makes Ruby sound so grating and annoying all episode. On top of that, nothing Ruby says is funny, and she's trying so hard. Not a single joke lands, and it's all just obnoxious yelling sounding at the end of the day. And she doesn't even get a cool moment during the fight. Not great circumstances for your main character, huh? This episode ranks as the ninth episode for the volume, which I know that sounds low, but trust me, this is one of those volumes where the episodes just keep getting better and better. So, what I've been doing is I'm going to be releasing a Ruby episode review every day for one month. So, I hope you have fun with this month-long Ruby review marathon. Want to see the next episode review early? Consider becoming a patron! And on that note, shout out to my beautiful $10 patrons, you're all amazing! Nako, Cool Duck, Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Virus, Ben Sketchbook, The Watcher, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Swift Cannon, The Infinity Effect, Gino, and Twisty. If you like these reviews, go ahead and give it a like, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.